Uh, so it's another stunning sunrise here in uh, Grand Teton. This is one of the molten barns. This is the northern barn. Uh, the southern barn looks kind of the same except there's no fencing around it like you see here. The sun's just coming over the hills over in the east. You can see the tops of the Tetons are starting to light up. It's kind of a watery light, which is okay. It's going to be very painterly. It's not going to be kind of a more dramatic light because there's clouds in the east that the sun's coming up through. So as far as finding a position to shoot from, the reason I chose here is because the barns are at a slight angle, or the barn is at a slight angle, so it's getting lit on one side, it's darker on the other. That's going to give a lot more dimension. Also, walking left and right, I positioned myself so that Grand Teton, the big peak there, is off to one side of the barn. You don't want it set up right in the middle of the barn because then it's just going to look like it's sticking out of the top of it. Now with the phone, this is a really wide angle. If you go with a longer lens and step back a little bit, it's going to make the mountains to the barn much larger because you're going to compress that distance. So what I'm doing compositionally rise right now is my shots are going to include the barn, will include the mountains, and they're going to go all, over, all the way over to that far tree. And that's going to form a visual block that's going to force you back into the image. It's going to be a nice composition. The light is beautiful. It's very panely. Waiting for the light to come up a little bit more so the barn actually gets some light. But we'll keep taking shots until we get what we're after. So here's the still from that position. This is shot at 39 millimeters, and this is just one of the two things that affects the overall size, relative size of things in the frame. The focal length is one thing, but how far you are from the subject is another. If I were standing right in front of the barn, the barn would be really big and the mountains would get tiny. As I step back a little bit, the mountains get a little bit bigger because we're compressing that distance. What we'll do next is we'll go back even further and shoot with a little longer lens and see what happens. Before we leave this frame, let's take a look at the composition first. Now you can see right in the middle of the frame, there's actually a physical path that allows you to get to the barn. That is allowing your eyes to take this walk to get to the barn with the mountains behind it. On either side, we've got a lot of shrubbery, including a lot of sage that forms a physical barrier from you leaving the image. Also left to right, we have the little outbuilding off to the left of the barn. The fence line follows along to the right, and then you hit this tree. And this tree being there, again, forms another visual block that keeps you from leaving the image. So even if you start to trace from the barn along the fence line to the tree, it kind of stops you and bounces you back into the image. And that's what allows you to linger and look into the image a little bit closer. Here's another image shot at the same 38 millimeters. This is a little bit later in the morning, moving off to the left a bit. I don't necessarily like it as well, but I do love the grasses in the foreground, the way the sun has gotten up, passed through the clouds, and the grasses have lit up. We still have the tree on the right, stopping you from leaving the frame, and the mountains are behind, but now Grand Teton is to the left of the barn, slightly behind a tree, which definitely takes away its importance. A nice scene, still a nice shot, but doesn't quite have the invitation to come into the frame the way the last one did. So before we move back and go a little bit longer focal length, let's take a look at a couple of shorter ones. Now, first of all, here's one taken at 27 millimeters, uh, obviously closer to the barn, but you can see how much larger the barn is in the frame compared to the mountain, which is just barely getting over the top of it. So if you want to make the shot really just all about the barn, this is an option, but it definitely takes away from the Tetons in the background. Now moving down the road to the southern barn, here's one taken at 36 millimeters. Uh, the Tetons are bigger than the barn and they're kind of in balance so it does make the frame work. Now by stepping a little bit closer and cropping at the same focal length, again 36 millimeters, you get a slightly different effect because the barn and the mountains are physically larger in the frame even though the focal length was the same. And then by stepping back again, this is 36 millimeters once more, by including more of the close foreground, you are kind of let in because you have the trees framing on either side, so it does invite you in. But since the barn and the mountains are smaller, for this to really work, it would need to be a larger print. All right, so you can see that the sun is up higher, everything's getting lit a lot better. And I came much further back. I'm on the road actually behind the barn. And it looks pretty small over there, but what you're going to find is if you use a longer lens uh, and you're lucky enough to not have a bunch of people standing in front of the barn, it's going to make the mountains look so much bigger compared to the barn as you back up. So we're going to shoot a longer lens. I've got a 70 to 200 millimeter lens on right now. I'm going to zoom in on the barn with Grand Teton behind it, slightly off to one side, and you're going to see how massive these peaks really are. 
So let's finish up with a couple of different focal lengths so you can see how the mountain gets bigger in relationship to the barn. Starting with 54 millimeters, then going up to 64 millimeters, 83 millimeters, and then finally at 116 millimeters. And that kind of gives you a good idea of what happens to the compression of the distant objects as you go up in focal length and move back. As the things get further away from you, their relative sizes change so that those further distant elements, particularly when you're dealing with mountains, will get larger in the scene. I hope these illustrations will inspire you to slow down a little bit and really think about what lens you're using, or at least what focal length you're using on a zoom, and your position in the scene so you can affect the relative sizes of the elements in your photo composition. Take the time to do this and you'll be in much better control of the composition of your photography.